So tomorrow, my friends, I will not be here. Ah, Sorry. Yeah. But I do have a two-part test quiz, whatever you want to call it, that you get to work on together. One part will be a single-sided uh, worksheet, and then the other part will be on Schoology. And again, it says clearly, even on the written part, do as a group, okay? So if the sub's like, I believe in that, it says do as a group. If they come back and say, we don't do that, send me a text, and I'll text the sub going, let them do it as a group, please. So, um, yeah, I got it. we're moving. So, moving day has come upon us. It's about time. I have floor-to-ceiling boxes, a maze. I've made a, I made a maze through all of my rooms. I mean, there's, oh, I can't believe how many things we've got. I'm gonna make my move, my wife move again, like in two years, so we can purge more stuff. Oh my gosh! I will tell you, there's stuff that I have put in boxes where it's like, I thought we got rid of this, like when we lived in Vegas. Nope, still got it. Why? But of course, that's kind of, I've had I've had to hold my tongue a little bit on a few things because my wife likes to keep things. My wife actually had our teacher licenses and our teacher contracts from when we first started teaching 28 years ago. I'm like, why do we still have these? But, I don't know, I guess to prove that we did, I don't know. But hey, we did, I asked you guys to take a look at 5154 practice, yes? So. Let's take a look at this. Um, you're going to have to help me out because I don't have decimals on this board. So if we don't have decimals, then... So the first problem says we have f prime of x is 2x squared, x minus 4, and x plus 3. Okay. So this is the derivative. There is an original function that had to take place in order for this derivative. Once you take like real calculus, you'll find out how to go from the derivative back to the original function. But this one, as it sits, if I find my critical values on the sign line, my critical values, I set each thing equal to zero. So I've set, if I set that equal to zero, I get zero, right? If I set this equal to zero, I get what? Four. And if I set uh, this equal to zero, I get? Negative three. Yay. Catching on. Those are critical values. Those are where certain turning points are going to take place. It's either going to be decreasing to increasing, increasing to decreasing, decreasing to decreasing, or increasing to increasing. All right, so there's a way to do this without using the calculator, and again, I'm fine if you use the calculator, okay? The easiest way to kind of do this is pick a value out here. So pick, say like 10. Do you all believe that 10 is to the right of four? Is 10 to the right of all of our critical values? So this is all you have to do. You don't have to actually have to do the math behind it, but if I plugged 10 in for this, does that give me a positive or a negative number? Positive, okay. If I plug 10 in for here, does that give me a positive or a negative number? Positive. If I plug 10 in for here, does that give me a positive or a negative number? Positive. positive. So that means on the right side of four, it's increasing as far as our function goes. Does that make sense how I did it? Did I really do any math to get there? Did I figure out what, if I plug 10 in, what I actually got? No. And then you're gonna pick another value. Okay, so let's think about a value in between here. Can I pick, no, let's not even pick that. Let's go even easier than that. Let's pick one. One's easy to plug in. If I plug one in, positive? positive? If I plug one in here, negative. negative? If I plug one in here, 
So if I multiply a positive and negative and a positive together, what do I get? Negative. So right here is a negative. So negative means the slope's negative. So it's going down. And then as it crosses x, way down in the y direction, could be right at the exact value of 4 in the y direction. It goes down from negative and goes up to positive. So what is 4? Is it a max, a min, or a point of inflection? So realize if this is negative, it's coming down. If this is positive, it means it's going up. At 4, is it a positive or negative or a point of inflection? How much? It's a min, right? You got a minimum. So at 4, this is a minimum value. Okay? Hello? All right. So let's pick one more value, or two more values. So let's pick negative 1. Okay? So I take negative 1 and I just plug it in. If I plug negative 1 in here, positive or negative? Positive. If I plug negative 1 in here, positive or negative? Negative. If I plug negative 1 in here, negative squared is positive. So that's what? Positive. Okay. Positive times negative times positive is what? Negative. So what is happening at 0? Is it a max, a min, or a point of inflection? So this, this is going down, right? So it goes, bless you, it goes from down to down. Positive, negative, or point of inflection? Well, if we went from negative to positive, give me a min. What do you think is going on at zero? Sign didn't change, right? Negative, negative? At zero, zero is the point of inflection. OK? And then if I plug uh, a number over here in, I don't know, let's pick a value way out here of negative 10. OK, let's follow along do the same thing. If I plug negative 10 in for this first part, what do I get, positive or negative? Negative. If I plug negative 10 in here, what do I get? Negative. If I plug a negative in and I square it and then multiply by 2, what do I get? Positive. So positive times negative times negative is what sign? Positive. positive. So at 10, this is a positive sign. Okay? So positive means it's going up. So what's happening at 3? Max, min, or point of inflection? Max. Max. Good. Okay, so where is this graph increasing? Where is it decreasing? So it's increasing where it's positive. So from negative infinity to negative 3, it's increasing. It's also increasing from 4 to infinity. Okay, slope is positive here, slope is positive here, and that means it's increasing. Where is it decreasing? Now decreasing, because we have a point of inflection, remember a point of inflection means the slope's zero. If the slope's zero, that means it's not increasing or decreasing. So it's decreasing from negative three to zero, and then from zero to four, okay? You listed zero twice, zero twice means a point of inflection took place. It means the slope <coughs> flattened out to become um, zero at that point. And I think we just did everything. Okay, so it's, it's really not difficult to do, but if they just gave you a sign line, or they just gave you a derivative, sometimes it becomes a little goofy to think about. This basically means that my original graph, my original graph would look something like this. So here's like this point of inflection. So I have positive, negative. Actually, I screwed that up. Point of inflection. 
a space loader graph would look like. Okay, we don't know exactly where it's hitting on the the Y's, but that's okay. All right, so you might see something similar to that tomorrow. Uh, problem number two, let's skip that. I'm not going to give you a word problem. Problem number three, they tell us uh, g at x, so we don't know the derivative is at this point. Find the g prime <coughs> and find any max min as ordered pairs to show the g prime. So can I move away from here? I'll move it up in case we have to come back to it. All right, so problem number three, they give us this. Oops. Okay, so if they give us g at x, g at x is the original function. Yeah, we could jump on Desmos and look at it. But something that we might want to do with this is we might want to use, find the derivative, okay? So the derivative of the outside is 2 times the inside times the derivative of the inside and yeah we could clean it up, we could foil it out, but we could probably just leave it as is, okay? Leaving it as is will make it easier to solve some things. So now we want to do our sine line. Okay? Does this 2 indicate where it would cross the x axis at all? The 2 doesn't. That just means it deals with the steepness of our graph. Okay? Because there's not an x there. So then I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to take this part here. I'm going to go x squared minus 6x equals 0. Factor an x out. So x equals 0 and x equals 6. So at 0 and 6, something's taking place, some critical values. Okay? We don't know if they're a max, a min, or a point of inflection at this point. And then I'm going to solve this right here. That's going to give me 2x minus 6 equals 0. Add 6. Divide by 3. So all of those, 0, 3, and 6, are called critical values. That's where the, the graph is changing direction, either being a max, a min, or a point of inflection. So let's do the same thing we had done before. Let's pick, say, like a value like 10. 10 is to the right of all of our important points, right? So I plug 10 in here. Is that positive or negative? If I plug 10 in right here for x, positive or negative? Positive. If I plug 10 in here, what do I get? 100 minus 60, which is? Positive. positive. So positive times positive means my graph is positive here. It means over here it's increasing at some point. Okay, so if it's taking place at 6, it's changing direction of our graph. Whether it's a max, a min, or a point of inflection, we don't know. Okay, so let's pick a value between... 0 and 6. So pick a value, I don't know, let's say 4. 4 is between 3 and 6, agree? All right, let's plug 4 in. If I plug 4 in here, I get 2 times 4 minus 6. That's positive. If I plug 4 in here, that's 16 minus <coughs> 24. 16 minus 24 is positive or negative. So that means there's a negative here. That means the graph had come down. Okay, let's pick, uh, say, a value like 1. Let's plug it in. If I plug 1 in for x, do I get a positive or negative for this part? Negative. negative. If I plug 1 in here, positive or negative? Negative, negative times negative is? No, positive. positive. All right, and let's pick. Uh, Another value, let's pick, say, maybe negative 10. Okay, that's definitely to the left. If I plug negative 10 in here, positive or negative? Negative. Negative, negative 10 in here, 
100 plus 60? Positive times negative? Okay, looking at our sign line, are there any points of inflection? No, we don't have the same sign twice in a row. Okay, so this is a positive slope here, this is a negative slope here. So what happens at zero? Goes down to up, max or min? <coughs> min? What happens at three? It goes from positive to negative. Max? What happens at six? It goes down to up. Min. I don't know if we answered all the questions. Yep. We got G prime. G prime's up there. Maxes and mins labeled. And we're good. And... If we wanted to do the mins as an ordered pair, if I plug zero into this, I'd get zero comma zero. So we have a min at zero comma zero. At three, if we plug three in, we get two times nine minus 18, two times six minus six. That's gonna give me zero there. This is negative nine times two. That's gonna give me at three comma zero. Okay, because zero times anything is zero. And at six, if I plug that in, I'm going to get uh, two times 36 minus 36, 12 minus six, two times zero times six is also zero. So we have a min at six comma zero. <coughs> okay? That's all we do. That's done. So it's, this is doing all kinds of bouncing on the... Uh, X axis, which is five. So if we wanted to know what this graph would look like, it's going to look something like this. Okay, and it's basically what the picture of the original function would look like. And you're like, stir if I graphed it on decimal, it does look like that. Ta da. Alright, number number four. Given the graph, we can't do number four. We don't have anything given to us. So I guess we gotta skip that. Number five, I'm not gonna see. Let's go right to number six. Can I move off here? Number six, number six, they gave us the sign line, the derivative sign line. So we have negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. This is at negative four. This is at zero. This is at three. And this is at five. Okay. So if it goes from negative to positive, what takes place at four? Negative four. Back, min. What takes place at zero when it goes positive to positive? Point of inflection. Point of inflection. Okay. If it goes from positive to negative, max. Max. Negative to positive, yeah. min. Sketch what this graph's going to look like. I don't know. They have an xy axis. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but it's going to do. We have negative four. We got zero. We got three. We got five, so something like that. Okay, so this was negative, this was positive, this was positive. Right here is that it's equal to zero. This is negative. This is negative and this is positive. Okay? I don't know if that graph exactly looks like that, but it looks something like that. Okay? We don't have enough information to know exactly where it's crossing the x-axis. We just know various points based on the sign line. Okay? I mean, you could dig upon this a little bit further and you could say, well, this would yield me x plus 4. This would lead me just x. 
this would be x minus 3, this would be x minus 5, so this is our, this is basically our derivative, and in order for you to do the antiderivative, which we haven't learned, you would want to have it all foiled out, multiplied out, and then, I mean, can, can I lead you down to one step further? You don't have to know this for this class, but just see, seeing how the antiderivative takes place. So I'm going to multiply that. That's going to give me x squared plus x minus 12. This times this. That's going to give me x squared minus 5x. Multiply a little further. That's going to give me x to the fourth uh, minus 5x to the third. Plus x to the third <coughs> minus 6x squared, or 5x squared, excuse me. And then the 12 minus 12x squared plus 60x. So our original function, f at x, or our derivative, is going to be x to the fourth minus 4x to the third, minus 17x squared, plus 60x. All right. If we wanted to find the antiderivative of this, you do this, and you have x to the fourth, minus 4x to the third, minus 17x squared, plus 60x. Antiderivative is going to be x to the fifth over 5 minus 4x to the fourth over 4 minus 17x to the third over 3 plus 60x squared over 2. And then you would do plus c for a constant. So our original equation <coughs> would have been x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the fourth minus 17x to the third over 3 plus 30x squared, and then plus c. Plus c is the constant. We don't know what the constant is at this point, but that's called the antiderivative. It's also called the integral, if you wanted to do that. But, and what that basically finds you is allows you to find the area under the curve between two different limits. But that, that becomes calculus two in college maybe the end of Calc 1 in college, if you took Calc AB, maybe you take Calculus AB, maybe you take Pre-Calc, or Pre-Calc Honors. You might have done something like that. I don't know if you'll do the integrals in Pre-Calc, but. But, so, my plan for all of you <coughs> is tomorrow, again, just so you know this, you have a one page, Test as group, still fall on my adventure. And then we also have a Schoology test as group. Okay, I have a sub. Sub should know that you take it as a group. I actually said they could do it as small groups or as a class or anywhere in between. Hopefully the sub gets it right. <coughs> okay, you have my permission. You have my, I think you have my number. If the sub's doing goofy, get me on a FaceTime call while I'm moving. I might be holding the box. Yeah, hold the box. <laughs> Put me up with the sub saying, yeah, as a group, please. And they're like, that's not Mr. Stirrup. And they're like, yeah, it really is him. I'll let you guys take a picture of my ID so you can say, look, it is him. <laughs>